Welcome back travelers. I am Delphi, your game master, and today we are set up and ready to go with a game of Tainted Grail. This is the introductory uh, piece that came in the box that we unboxed last night. And I am here with my husband who is going to supposedly teach me how to play this. I'm, I'm not too sure though. I don't, I really don't like, like complicated rules. So here goes nothing. Well, this has been really simple so far. Um, I was going to go back through and show how to set all this up and show that it is actually, uh, you know, pretty simple here. So this is just a single player uh, introductory mission, um, or I guess there's probably a few, maybe a few missions in it, but it's just like a little introductory part that doesn't spoil the actual game. Um, you you play as Bayor, the uh, the smith. And his character is here. Um, so first you have to uh, get get the, the character out and the men here. Um, this is the men here. It lights up this area. So the whole idea of the game is that this weirdness is approaching. And you can only adventure in places where you have uh, this men here lighting up the areas. So first off, um, there are these universal markers, which are uh, the little red cubes. Um, they are used to show your stats and your food, your wealth. Um, and then also over here, like energy, health, and terror, which uh, I get into in a second here. Um, yeah, so that, that's literally the next thing. Um, so energy, which is marked right here, uh, is your basic stamina, which is consumed by travel, combat, and exploration, and it's regenerated each day as long as you eat food and rest. Uh, your health is your physical condition. Uh, your energy can never be higher than your health, and whenever your health reaches the red zone, you're on the brink of death, and you attach the you're dying card. Uh, to your character tray, which I think is kind of cool. Uh, and then there's also Terror, which is here, um, which uh, once it reaches the top, you start going insane, and it makes uh, any actions difficult. And if your Terror is higher than your health, uh, you panic in combat and diplomacy. Uh, whenever your Terror reaches the red zone, you're on the brink of madness, and you attach the You're Going Insane card to your character tray. So... Uh, the first thing that you really have to do with this is to set it up. Um, you take the, the health marker and you place it where um, the little chevrons are. So for Bayor it's 9, so you would put that here. And then for energy, uh, it's right here at 6. And then for terror you always start at 0. And so then you also have to set up your character stats, which this is sort of neat too. Um, if you look here, the other side of this, you'll see that it shows how to set up Bayor for the character board. And ev every character has that, right? Yeah. Like not just Bayor? Yeah, so for Bayor, he starts with two aggression, one courage, one practicality. Uh, no empathy, one caution, and no spirituality. So we've got that set up here on the board. And then he also starts with three food and one wealth. So we've also got that. And then as you see, it says play with this side down. So once you set it up, you just flip it. And this is, you play like this and it shows um, his ability and then his, um, the, the negative trait that he has. So everyone has um, a negative trait. So what's his negative trait? His negative trait is festering wound. Um, you lose a health every time you become exhausted. So we don't want to let him become exhausted. No. That would be very bad. Alright, so let's see. So once you've done that, you need to open um, the open and play deck which come uh, that contains the, the combat and the diplomacy cards. 
And also... And it, it looked like this. Yeah. Like that. It had open and play on it. And then on the back, it just says safe yeah. encounter. But that's what the car actually looked like. We already opened the deck, though. And it also contained these uh, four uh, encounter cards, which normally for each of these, you would have a whole deck. But for this intro, you just get one card of each. So for the green, the green one here, green uh, is mostly used in the wilds and contains natural threats such as wild animals or legendary beasts. Many of them give food. Uh, the gray deck contains dangers related to the world of man such as brigands and people driven to insanity by the weirdness. Uh, many of these encounters give items or wealth. Uh, the purple deck contains supernatural threats. You will have to discover its significance yourself. Uh, the blue deck is where you'll find non-combat challenges that may happen every time you visit a settlement. They are resolved using a special diplomacy deck. All right. And of course, this time, because it's the intro, there's only one, one card of each. So then the next thing you have to do is you set up the location cards. Um, so for this uh, intro, you only use uh, the locations numbered 101 to 107, but it's said to not do 106 and 107 yet, so we've got 101 through 105 set up. And so this is 101, and if you see on the, I don't know if you can tell here, it's really tiny, but there's little 103, 104, 105, and 102 on this card and so you know to do 102, 103, 104, 105 there. Then there's also um, the help cards and, well, there's the rule book, but we haven't really gotten to that yet. The, the help cards uh, basically tell you, it's like a little mini glossary for terms. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we got the order of the day and the item glossary here. Back it up a little bit. Yeah, it also yeah. kind of tells you how to go through each day. Yeah, so or item of the item glossary and order of the day, and then on the back we have combat and diplomacy items, and then the action overview for when you get to that, which is really nice that they give you like a a help card. I'm going to guard these with my life. <laughs> All right, and that's pretty much the opening setup uh, for the intro. Um, the next step is going to be actually uh, starting the day. So All right, let's start forward. our day. Okay. What do we do? Um, let's see. It is. Oh wait. Well, since uh, since we're gonna start this, I need to go ahead and read the little intro. Yeah, you gotta read the intro. Story. Okay. All right. They still call this place a farm hold even though barren fields provide little food and crumbling walls offer no protection. The last relic of the glory days of Kunanach, Kuna, I don't know, I'm sorry, I don't know how to pronounce this, uh, is its men here, always adorned with red ribbons, lit by candles, and with a daily offering at its gnarled feet. As long as the men here repels the weirdness, the townsfolk are ready to endure anything. But last night, the weirdness came closer than ever before. A man was lost, following the call of his future self. A house on the outskirts of town has turned inside out, its furniture grown into a bloated outer shell, like barnacles on the side of a boat. That doesn't sound good. That's really cool. <laughs> that does not sound good. <laughs> I like that. Uh, for many hours, the air tasted of metal and sour milk. Ew. <laughs> Now people say your guardian men here is failing like many others all over the land. For you, the night was even worse. The festering wound in your side throbbed as if something tried to tear itself free and join the rolling clouds of weird outside of town. In the morning, a boy comes running to your shed. Master Ear Friars needs to see you. Move, you big goof. You chase the brat away with a well-aimed throw of a boot and immediately start to regret it as the boot lands in a deep puddle outside your door. So that's sort of the little... Yeah, so we're having a bad day. We got our boot wet. <laughs> oh, no. And our furniture turned inside out. 
Well, someone's did. Someone's furniture turned yeah, inside out. I don't out. think it was ours, luckily. Okay, so it is now dawn. Beor is ready to start his journey. Uh, perform your first start of the day routine following the order listed on the green health card. Yeah, so that's what our order of the day card is for. Yeah, I got my order of the day card. Okay. The card asks you to remove expired menhirs and locations out of the menhir range. The only menhir on the map has a dial. It's not expired. And all revealed locations are adjacent to this menhir. You don't discard them. Now reduce the menhir dial by one. It should show number seven. Okay, I'm going to do that. The help card also mentions time tokens, but there are none in play now. Okay, so the, the little men here die is actually down here at the bottom, and you can remove it and look for the seven. Yeah, it's kind of hard to read, to Hold be on, honest. I got, I got this. Here's seven. And then you put it back, so now it says seven, and then you put it back. Okay. Okay. So now we're on day seven. In a standard game, you would now reveal an event card, but this tutorial has its own event card printed below. So read it. All right, quest. Speak with Kunach's blacksmith, Air Fryer. Uh, hint to meet, Air Fryer. Uh, you have to explore the Kurinach farm hold location. All right, there are no guardians to move, and you don't have any items, so you may skip the remaining start of the day steps. All right, so part two is first exploration. After start of the day, characters may perform actions. Each action in Tainted Grail is marked with a special icon that also shows its cost. All right, so as his action, as his first action, Beor should visit Erfrir. Uh, to do so, explore the Kuvernach farm hold location. To initiate this action, pay one, uh, I think it was energy? Yeah, pay one energy, move the marker on your energy track one slot lower. So in a standard game, exploration would direct you uh, to text on the other side of the location card, but this tutorial won't spoil any stories from the campaign. Instead, go to the tutorial exploration journal printed on the last page of the exploration journal book. There, find the appropriate section 101, Coronet Farm Hold, and start reading. Okay, so... Oh, this is what I'm looking at now. 101, Coronet Farm Hold. Does exploration journal entries for most locations in Tainted Grail start with an introduction that leads to your decisions? Read the location introduction first. So, as the introduction. A deep feeling of loss pervades Kurnach, from a dilapidated farms to the sunken eyes of those who remain in town. The men here in the market is nearly extinguished. Still, this place is the only home you've ever you ever knew. Now you're ready to choose what to do in this location. Below are two options uh, redirecting you to different verses, paragraphs. Uh, each has a requirement. The first time you come here, you're only able to choose the first option because the second one requires a specific part of a status story trigger uh, marked on your tutorial save sheet. If you are here for the second time, you should already have part two of the required status, so only make Oh, so only the second option is accessible to you. So make your choice now. So I have to do the first thing. Mm -hmm. So speak with your master only if you don't have any part of the surprise answer. Okay, so I don't. So go to verse one. All right, so verse one. All right, so Urfrir is up earlier than usual. As you enter, he hides a large pack behind the curtain and turns to you with a wide smile. You hear, lad? Good. I hope you're ready to stretch your legs a bit. I hear a star fell near whitening, and a local tanner picked it up. It's a solid ingot, large as your dingy, hand, as your dingy head. I'd rather not have it fall into the, the hands of some other smith. You nod. Falling stars are a bad omen for most simple folk, but they always excite blacksmiths and armors. After all, the legendary Excalibur was forged from one of these cold shards of distant skies. Soon you depart walking down sloping fields towards the mist-covered forest. With some rations, your trusty hammer, and a purse of silver air fryer gave you, uh, before stepping into the shadow of the trees, you take one last look back at the ancient statue towering above shacks and houses. How much longer can this tired old thing protect Kuranach? So gain part one of the surprise air and status, and gain one wealth, exploration ends. 
Okay, so we got to put a thing in our wealth, right? Yeah. Okay, so we got one extra one, and we're gonna put it in wealth. Now we got two wealth. Okay. It says you have gained your first story-related status. Mark it on your tutorial save sheet, or write it down on a piece of paper. Right, let's see. Part three: first travel. Your exploration is now finished, and you have a new task. It's time to start moving Bayor towards his destination, the cursed farm hole known as the Whitening. Uh, as you know from the exploration journal, the Whitening is northeast of your village. The plan uh, to plan the journey, let's study all revealed locations. Uh, to the east is the Charred Conclave, a dangerous place that will trigger an automatic encounter as soon as Bayor enters it. The rule marked with the it looks like a lightning bolt icon. Yeah, yeah, right there. To the north is Hunter's Grove, a place where Bayor can gather some food. Uh, this looks better, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> um, perform a travel action, uh, pay one energy, and move Bayor to Hunter's Grove. Okay, well, we're actually at five because that was our exploration, right? Yeah, we need to and then, down And then two we do five. one more, so for four. Yeah, so it should be down four. Okay, four. and then now we go somewhere? Yeah, so we go to Hunter's Grove. As you arrive there, check if there are any locations connected to the Hunter's Grove that you could reveal. You may reveal any locations that are connected to your current location with direction keys. Uh, the numbers on the edges of the card. For more information, see page 10 of the rulebook. Okay, so I can I can put in our two extra cards now, right? Yeah, I think so. Okay, so then this one goes here because it's got a 102 and a 102. It matches. And then... Oh, wait. No, it doesn't. It goes here. Hold on. Oh, where does Which it go? Are you on? 107? No, 107 is here. Yeah, look. It's that. And the 106 is there. Yeah. Okay. See, guys, I'm, I'm really terrible with following directions. <laughs> I'm very bad with directions. Okay. Do not attach location 113 to the top of Hunter's Grove. That would be too far from your only men here. Okay. So you can only attach what your men here can light, I guess, is adjacent to. That it can light so, off. like, it could technically put something here if there was something here, and I could put something here if there was something here? I think so, yeah. Okay. So it looks like a, a spread of nine cards. Mm-hmm. Okay. But then, as you see, it eventually... Right, but you would need more men here, right? Because... Yeah, yeah. You, they and wouldn't then, be lit. Right. Okay. And then... As far as, like, the space goes, we might have to, like, take away cards and, like, okay, now we're here. Not exactly sure how that'll work. All right, so, uh, Bayor's new location has an action, gather food. Uh, food is an important resource that you consume at the end of each day, so gathering more won't hurt. Uh, to activate the location action, pay its cost of two energy. Uh, Bayor gains two food. Uh, take two markers and place them in the food slot of your character tray. The action also asks you to draw one green encounter. All right, so take the green encounter card you place near the map during the setup. Place it face up so that you have plenty of free space to the right of the encounter card. Okay, but we need two more of these things for food. Oh, are we out? Yeah, we don't have any more. I can get some more. All right, it was two more? Yeah, two more. For the food. Okay. But we want to have all the food. But we're kind of getting low on energy already. Okay. And then I'm flipping the green thing, right? Is that what, what it said? Yeah, yeah. Okay. But we also, it also said we need a lot of room to the right of it. I got this. Look, I'm smart. Okay. Okay. That's that's what we're doing. I have, no, I have no idea what any of that means, but apparently that's what we're doing. All right, so read the encounter card carefully. To win, you need to gather a number of markers in the combat pool equal to or higher than the encounter value. To gain these markers, you play combat cards from your hand. Prepare two help cards. Uh, one with the combat overview and one with the combat and diplomacy icons. 
All right, so now let's go through your first combat step-by-step -step following the combat overview help card. So which combat and diplomacy icon, action overview. Do you have that combat overview? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You do too. Oh, no. No, I don't. <laughs> you should. Well, I have it now. Okay. Okay, so we don't need... Uh, this one at the moment. They look like this. <laughs> you can't read them anyway. There's the combat overview. And then um, the diplomacy overview looks like like that. If I can, yeah. All right, so we draw three cards from the combat deck. Remember not to shuffle your deck in this tutorial. Okay, we did okay. not shuffle. Okay. So I'm drawing these three cards. So where am I putting them so we can see? So we got an attack, a reposition, and an ignore pain. Okay, so you don't have to check the encounter's trait. It has none. The misshaped vermin. Okay. And you don't need to pick an active character. You're alone, so only Bayor can activate. Uh, you can only you can also ignore uh, the delayed ability step. There aren't any abilities in play yet. All right, so time to fight. Play the attack card. Attach it to the right edge of the encounter card as seen above. This causes both halves of the I think that's the aggression key. Uh, and and the bottom golden key to join. Okay, so the attack card is that this one. Is that first one, yeah. Okay, and then we put it... So... Okay, yeah, so it matches. I got that symbol and that symbol, and it yeah, matches. Yeah, and if you can see, I think that means that it requires two aggression, and Bayor has two aggression. Okay. And that means that it connects. Okay, so you have to have enough to make it work? Yeah, so, like, if, if you... If that was like courage instead and he only has one courage, then it wouldn't connect. Because it's two there. Right. So because okay. it's two, it connects because he has two. Okay. Like, you, like that's what you need to have in order to make that connection. I think I don't understand. That's okay. <laughs> that's okay. I'll figure it out. Okay. Let's see. Yeah, this causes both halves of the... Okay, sorry about that. All right. You may... Only connect keys with an attribute icon if you have this attribute. Bayor has two aggression on his character tray, so the aggression key connects and grants you its bonus. Well, see, that's what you were trying to explain to me. Yep. Place one of the red cubes in your combat pool. What's the combat pool? <laughs> <laughs> um... I guess, it, is it like... There. Right, well, we need another cube. Got knowledge, yeah. experience, magic. Oh, we need another one. Yeah, we need okay. another red cube. But I don't know where the combat pool is. I think it just goes here. Oh, okay. Yeah, because it, it shows it on the... If you look, it shows the little cube on there. This is what represents that it connects, I think. Okay. So it says the golden bottom key always connects and has no requirements. Place one more of those in your combat pool. Okay, so we place one yeah, more. Yeah, put in another there. one there. Yeah. Oh, is that what the little red thing is? Yeah. Oh! Guys, I'm smart. I am smart. <laughs> there you go. Now let's check the text of the attack card. It has two abilities. The first ability causes all enemy attacks to deal one more, uh, whatever that, what does that symbol mean? Let's see. Do I have the... Checking our symbols? Yeah. It's like a little, it looks like a poison symbol, kind of. No, oh, it just literally means damage. Oh, okay. okay. All right, so the first ability causes all... 
enemy attacks deal one more damage. All right, the second ability instructs you to place a time counter on the attack card. What does that symbol mean? Uh, triggers when the last time token is removed. Okay. The ability itself will be resolved during the next delayed ability step unless you cover it up with another card first. So each turn you may play only one card plus as many additional cards as you can connect using, uh, now it's giving me all the symbols, using their bonus action, it looks like. Yeah, bonus icons, okay. This means any further cards you play this turn would require you to connect the uh, bonus icon. Okay, so that's, bonus, yeah. so it's telling me that I have to match these things up with those things? Yeah. Okay, so if I'm looking at the arrows, right, then it would have to be... It says, um, it says play ignore pain. Okay, that's this one. So we'll go here? Well, it's, well, yeah, play ignore pain. It contains a, a bonus icon that connects to the... What is that? Is that the courage one? Yeah, it's the courage one. The courage key on the previous card. So I guess you have to look... I guess you, you're supposed to put it like this. Oh, so it overlaps? Yeah. Oh, gotcha, because it, it makes sense with the, okay, maybe that's why it was dark yeah. on one side and light on the other. Well, see, that's smart when they came up with that for the the art. Mm -hmm. How it shows the, the different contrast or different saturation. Okay, cool. Okay, well, it says... Um... So it contains a bonus that connects to the, the courage key on the previous card. Before placing this card, remove the, I guess, time token from attack. All right, so it says, Ignore Pain has two other keys. The blue magic key requires one magic to be connected. You do not have any magic at the moment, so you can't connect it. Uh, the free key contains a, a, bon a green plus sign bonus icon, so draw one card. Okay. Draw a card. Uh, that's this step. Yeah. Okay. Okay, we got so powerful it blow, there. it looks like. Okay. That. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Okay. All right, Ignore Pain also contains a text ability just like attacks ability, it triggers during the enemy attack step. All right, uh, you have two cards left in your hand now, but let's not cover the ignore pain card for now. Proceed to the next phase. All right, so a quick victory check shows that Bayor didn't win yet. He has two markers in the combat pool out of a required four. Right. Okay. So I got one and two. I read it that down here. Yeah. And where does it show? And up yeah. there it shows so it's four. how many you need, yeah. Okay, so we've got two out of four. All right. It's time for the enemy attack. In Taina Grell, each enemy has many different moves depending on the value of the combat pool. Bayor currently has two markers in the combat pool. Check the combat table. The attack for zero to two markers deals one damage. To move Bayor's health, uh, track one slot down. Okay. So, so we move the little red thing down. Okay, so we're getting eaten up by a little rat. Okay. <laughs> all right. uh, that's not all. Bayor's Ignore Pain card modifies the enemy attack. It instructs you to add a marker for every point of damage received from the attack. So you can add one... Uh, marker to the combat pool. Okay. Okay, so because we took an attack, we get to add an attack. Yeah. So we have three now because we took one. All right, gain one for every... Oh, okay, yeah. So would that go here mm -mm. or... Combat pool's over there. i move the whole thing up. Right there. Combat pool. Oh, put every game... Oh, okay, yeah, I see that. All right, awesome. There we go. Okay. Let's see. Alright, during the end of turn, you must discard until you have three cards in your hand. You only have two cards in hand, so this doesn't apply. Now, draw one combat card. 
We got Battle Cry. All right, so this is second combat turn. All right, the next turn begins. You could finish this battle quickly by playing Powerful Blow, but that would mean losing energy as stated on the card. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's a lose one energy gain. Okay. Let's start uh, with the battle cry instead. Uh, it's free key contains a... What, is that a draw card bonus? The green? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah which, mean, yeah, which means you draw one more card. Okay. All right. You have now drawn the perfect card to end this encounter. Oh, we have to actually draw a card. So, because it yeah, because it says because draw, it says so draw the card okay, with so the green then, thing right there. Okay. Okay. So well, now we got throw. So you've now drawn the perfect uh, card to end this encounter. Play the throw card. It has the that lightning bolt icon. What was I don't remember what that meant now. Uh, bonus action. Okay. It has the bonus action icon in its uh, aggression key. Additionally, its free key gives you uh, more mark another marker. Yeah, okay. All right, so that would mean that you would put another one on there. Yeah, because it's, it's, it's got that red dice symbol. And I'm assuming that you don't put a red dice symbol there because right. it doesn't match, right? right? But I think these are supposed to go over here. Because I was putting them where the symbol was, but... Yet, I like it where the symbol is. You want to do it on the symbol? I, that, that makes a whole lot more sense. Okay. All right, and so then you would put... No, that one stays there. And then this one... The, the, yeah. This one goes here, because okay. it's got that symbol. So now i got four. We beat the rat. Yeah. So hold on. Yeah, this lady is free key gives you mark or more. Perform the victory check. There are four markers in the combat pool, which means Bayor has won. The loot is one food. <laughs> We're eating the vermin. Uh, place one marker in a uh, food section of Bayor's character tray. Yay! Okay, we got we got a food. Yeah. I don't need the dance markers anymore because we killed the rat. So I get like putting so when do we know to put it here and here, and then when do we put it here? Because, so this matches. See, it may, right. it matches up like that, and if there's a, a red dice there, then you put a dice thingy. But the, the action, I know this. I learned. So it says, gain a red dice for every point of damage received, and right. we took a damage, okay, so but there's it, no red dice. Thing yeah, to so put, if it's so not we had on, to put. So if you get one from an ability here, and it's not on a connection thing, then you would put it over here. Yeah, that's how it works. Okay. At least that's how I'm saying it works. Yeah, that that sounds really good. I like that. You did good. All right. Let's see. Now put the defeated encounter card at the bottom of its deck in this tutorial. Uh, just place it face down near other encounter decks. Uh, return all play, drawn, or discarded cards to your combat deck and shuffle the deck. If okay. you want to, you may play this encounter again, ignoring any health or energy losses to familiarize yourself with the combat mechanics. If you are not sure about any of the rules, check them in the rule book, pages 14 to 17. So we're supposed to shuffle them, right? Yeah. That's Even though in the very beginning it said don't shuffle these. Yeah, I think it's just for that first okay, so combat I can shuffle encounter. It. They you know, scripted it. So. I'm going to shuffle it. Yeah, go ahead. Every day. The terrible reference. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we are at uh, ending the day. I dropped the card. Good Hold job. on, guys. I didn't tell you to shuffle it that way. Oh, no, I dropped two cards. All right, I got my two cards back. All right, keep reading. All right, so Bayor is wounded and has only two energy left. If you look at the energy track, slots marked as one and zero are red and have the exhausted sign. For now, you don't want Bayor to become exhausted, so you should rest. 
make a pass action. This will uh, end your in game day. All right, so rest and eat. Discard one food marker from Bayor's tray, and Bayor gains uh, one health. Move his health marker uh, one slot up. He doesn't lose any uh, terror, as his terror is already at zero. Okay, so we lose a food. We ate the rat. <laughs> Yummy. And we gain the health. It was good for us. Ew. <laughs> Alright, restore Bayor's energy to full, move the marker on the energy track back to six. Okay. Because so, good night's sleep uh, fixes all. So because we ate, we restore our energy. So it doesn't have anything to do with the sleep, it just has to do with the sleep. <laughs> well, we have to sleep and eat. Alright, so, so you don't have any experience points, so you can't advance your character. You also don't have any upgrade cards to modify your deck with. Alright, so... Let's put this back over here. Uh, you're in a location with the with some symbol. Looks like an eye. Is it talking about this? Oh, I bet this is the dream symbol. Yeah, this symbol right there is talking about. Okay. Yeah, so in a normal game, you would now open the exploration journal of this location and look for the dream. Uh, in this tutorial, read the dream from the tutorial journal instead. Remember to look at the correct section of the tutorial journal, uh, 102 Hunter's Grove. Dreams contain both story text and rules. Remember to apply this dream's rules, which apparently is lose one energy. All right, so the new day will begin after I read the dream. Alright, so 102 dream. Okay. So in your dream you return to the to the dark ravine deep in the grove. Okay, well I guess I should read the opening here too. I wasn't sure about that. Alright, so Hunter's Grove. As you walk into the shadow of the Hunter's Grove, your heart beats faster and your wound burns. You you died not far from here two weeks ago, though it took you some time though it took some time for you to realize that. You try hard to not think about those events humming your favorite tune to chase away the memories. So is this like spoilers? So Baylor's already dead? Hmm. I mean, that's what it says. Well, I said we weren't supposed to get spoiled. Well, I guess it's like starter stuff. I don't know. That's what it says, though. That you died not far from here two weeks ago, though. It took maybe that's part of the dream. I don't know. Anyway, now it says dream. Uh, in your dream, you return to the dark ravine deep in the grove. Like many others, you search for a little girl who went missing in Kurnach. Instead, you find a mass of what look like tangled black snakes crawling across the moss-covered stone. The mass rises on countless black legs and rushes at you. Uh, for a split second, you see the horrific truth. Uh, what charges is a malformed, overgrown, beating heart on countless legs of blackened veins and arteries. It opens its circular maw full of lamprey-like teeth. Next moment, it's on top of you, ripping into your side and trying desperately to push itself into your chest. With all your strength, you pull it away from the wound, throw it to the ground, hold it in place with your boot, and crush it with a swing from your hammer. Then you wake up, alone in the forest, shivering. The wound burns again. You ask uh, the village priestess and the herbalist. You tried uh, many remedies and quaffed foul smelling mixtures still the wound festers uh turning black you try to fall asleep uh, but your mind dwells on what fate awaits you and whether a thing like the one that killed you will emerge from your chest uh once you die so you lose one energy and you gain one terror uh the prophetic dream causes bayor to lose a point of energy and gain a point of terror uh, move the markers accordingly after reading um a dream or a nightmare, continue the game. Uh, in this case, go to part eight, start of the second day. Okay. So that was just the dream. That was not we're actually dead, right? 
I don't think so. Am I? I mean, because it says it says this for the the it, like it has like a little intro part here for Hunter's Grove before the dream. Mm-hmm. So maybe we're already dead. I don't know. Okay. Anyway, um, <laughs> so whenever a character's terror is in the red zone of the terror track, sleeping in locations with the sleeping icon causes nightmares instead. Well, how is that not a nightmare? That sounds like a nightmare. Yeah, that's a nightmare. I would be, like, if bolting a, away. If a heart creature tried to jump into your chest, the tentacles and everything, yeah. Yeah, that would definitely be a nightmare. Okay, so what did we say? We lost one energy and we gained one terror? Yeah, one energy and we gained a terror. So this is just a bad thing. Maybe, maybe we have good dreams in the future? I hope so. All right, so then we go to part eight. All right, so part eight, start of the second day. All right, so perform the start of the day just like before, so reduce the menhir dial uh, okay. to six. I got this. Take the dial out. Find the six. Put the dial back in. I'm good at that. Can you not just turn it? Like, you have to take it in and out, I guess. Can, can I do it my way? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I like taking it in and out. That's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. All right, time to get demonetized. <laughs> All right, start the second day. We did that. Uh, read the next event card, which normally would be on the cards, but it's just here for you for the tutorial. Uh, tired and in pain, you start the final leg of your journey. Uh, hint, sometimes event cards have an additional impact on the game. Remember to apply any rules you find on them. So that's literally part eight is literally just, okay. I'm tired and in pain, starting to follow your journey. That's part eight. All right, so part nine is entering the whitening. All right, so travel right to location 107, pay one energy, and move Bayor to the whitening card. Okay. All right, no new locations revealed. They would be too far away from Coronach's uh, men here. All right, and Whitening has uh, that icon that I can't remember what it's called. Uh, bonus action. The little lightning symbol? Yeah, bonus action icon. Yeah. All right, this is an instant rule you must resolve as soon as you enter the location. All right, the action instructs you to draw a blue encounter. Unlike your previous encounter, this is a diplomacy challenge. A very inquisitive guard stops you as you enter the location. Place the blue encounter card face up so you have plenty of space to the right of his card. Okay, suspicious guard. That's what it looks like. Okay. All right, so what, what does the suspicious guard want with us? Let's see. Uh... First, diplomacy turn. All right, diplomacy encounters are similar to combat encounters. Uh, the main difference is that instead of gathering points in the combat pool, you will engage in a tug of war on the affinity track visible on the left edge of the encounter card. Uh, diplomatic encounters also don't have a combat table. Instead, they have uh, multiple stages. They may have multiple stages. Uh, to win, you need to push the marker to the top of the affinity track in each stage. Okay, so this thing? Yeah. Okay. Fortunately, this encounter only has one stage. Uh, prepare two help cards, uh, one with uh, diplomacy overview and one with combat and diplomacy icons. All right, so that means to flip that. Okay. Uh, place a marker on the gray slot of the infinity track. It is the starting point. So there. All right, so we draw three cards from the diplomacy deck. I for detail, backtrack, and show off. <laughs> Do you want to show those? Yeah. Show them off. Okay, so this one is I for detail. Camera will focus here. On. Okay. And then this one is backtrack. There we go. And this one is show off. Okay. 
All right, so it says to play the I, I for detail card, only one key connects. It has the whatever that symbol is symbol. The, the <laughs> Check the, the effect on the encounter card next to the current stage of the encounter. Uh, a special diplomacy bonus that varies depending on the encounter card and the stage of the encounter. In this stage, every one of those symbols yields one, um, it just has an arrow up. Uh, this means you move the marker of the affinity track one slot up. Okay. Remove the time counter from the eye for detail card, then draw one card. But draw a diplomacy we, thing. Now we get another card. Okay, and then we got threatening voice. Ooh, we got to threaten a guard. Mm -hmm. It says, "Do you have the? Yeah, you, you have misdirection. Yeah. All right. So play, um, play misdirection as your first card. The bottom connects um, with a times two multiplier, granting you two um, up increases. Times two up. Times two up. Okay." Move the marker on the affinity track two slots up. Then play Threatening Voice as your second card. The required bonus icon is in the bottom key of this card and connects. Right? Yeah. Okay. And that's where we, we have that bonus action. Mm hmm all right, the text of this card instructs you to lose one rep, but you don't have any, so nothing happens. Also, if the character has at least two uh, aggression and Bayor has, move the marker one slot up on the affinity track. Perform the affinity check. The marker is now on the highest slot of the affin affinity track. Uh, this was the last and only stage, which means Bayor wins and earns the reward. I did it right! Place one marker in the reputation slot of Bayor's character tray. Okay. We got a reputation. We got a reputation. Where does it go? Right there. Right there. Okay. All right. Uh, put the encounter card at the bottom of the blue deck. Return all play drawn or discarded cards to Bayor's diplomacy deck and shuffle the deck. If you want to play this encounter again, ignoring any uh, health or energy or rep losses to familiarize uh, yourself with diplomacy mechanics, uh, you can. Uh, if you are not sure about the rules, you can always check them in the rule book, pages 16 to 19. All right. So now we're at part 12, uh, entering the whitening. Uh, in part one of this tutorial, uh, Urfir uh, asked Bayor to bring him a, a meteorite ingot from the whitening, so it's time to explore this location. Pay one energy, but instead of flipping the real whitening location card, go to an appropriate section in the tutorial exploration journal at the end of the exploration journal book. Okay. Oh, we gotta actually pay the energy. Alright, whitening. All right, so uh, the hole is here, as always, gaping at the heart of whitening. Uh, the white lichen, lichen, sorry, uh, that gave this town its new name seems to grow out of it. It covers the walls of the nearby halls with a thick coat. Only close up can, only close up one can discover it is, in fact, a layer of small sparkling crystals like sea salt on the wooden post of a pier. As you inspect it, several people watch you suspiciously. You shrug your arms to show them you're not interested in their secrets. Go to verse 7. All right. It says, uh, There is no love lost between Coronach and the Whitening. You shouldn't stay here too long. All right. So you can either visit the village Tanner or you can ask the whiteners about their men here. So if we visit the village Tanner, we go to verse 9. And if we ask the whiteners about their men here, we go to verse 5. So what do you want to do? 
Choices. Yeah. Do you want to go to the tanner or ask about their men here? I want to go to the tanner. Okay. So go to verse 9. All right. You ask around about the tanner uh, Erfir wanted you to find and draw some uh, strange looks. Finally, someone tells you this man moved out several months ago. Angry and confused, you reach the tannery only to find the building abandoned and covered in cobwebs. What's going on? Was this a cruel joke? So gain one terror, uh, gain part two of the surprise errand status, exploration ends. Okay, so, so change our terror. Yeah, and mark down that we've got surprise errand part two status. Yep. And continue the scenario, go to part 13 the way back. So you have to go back to Coronach fast. Travel to Hunter's Grove as before. Perform a travel action, pay one energy, and move Bayor to location 102. It says Bayor has only uh, two, I guess that's after that, or? Yeah. Okay, so go ahead and pay this. So location 102. Which is just home back strip. there, yeah. yeah. So back to there. Okay. So Bayor has only two energy left, just like the day before. But his time, but this time, Bayor wants to travel as fast as possible, even at the cost of exerting himself. Perform another travel, pay one energy, and move to location one hundred one. All right. All right, Bayor is now back in his hometown, exhausted. Uh, take a look at Bayor's negative trait listed on the character tile. According to the rules, its rules, uh, Bayor loses one health. All right, tired and in pain, Bayor is ready to conclude his journey. Uh, pay one energy to explore Coronach. As before, go directly uh, to the tutorial exploration journal. So we're going to be all the way down to zero energy. We're so tired. Important. While the tutorial gives players a general grasp of the game, there are many additional rules it does not cover, such as parties and party actions, event cards, character, or sorry, chapter setup, legacy locations, uh, encounter traits, and so on. Before playing a full campaign, we encourage you to read the full rule book at least once. Yeah. So we don't even get, like, well, I want to know what happens. <laughs> <laughs> it leaves you on a cliffhanger? Pretty much. Oh, that's terrible. I mean, it just says tutorial save sheet. And Tainted Grail save sheets are used uh, both for saving your campaign mm -hmm. state and holding different story triggers uh, that change how locations and non-player characters respond to you. Below, you can find the only status used in the tutorial game. It has two parts. If you just gain part one of the surprise errand status, mark uh, the box number one. If you gain part two, mark the second box. So I guess that goes into the main campaign then. So we have to know for the main campaign that we have surprise errand part two. But I'm not planning on playing this dude. Yeah, I guess that's true. We weren't going to play him, were we? Well, we could each play two characters, maybe. No, I only want to play one. <laughs> oh, what? I would play three. I guess. <laughs> I want to play one. I don't want to. I don't want to play multi multi character. Yeah. Well, I guess we just don't get to have his story if we do. Oh, we'll have to play two. it again. We'll have to play it again. Okay. We'll just do two runs. Because I want to know if he's actually dead. I know, right? Like that. It doesn't say anything about that anywhere else either. It's just like, oh, you died here two weeks ago. Like, <laughs> wait, what? And now it's just like, oh, just continue on just, with this just story. Just continue on. You know, yeah. you're dead. You're actually like a, a living zombie ghost yeah. thing. Yeah, but yeah, that uh, that concludes the tutorial of Tainted Grail. I wonder what these these car these cards were for. Yeah, we didn't. Even, maybe if we had made a different choice or something. Yeah, I don't know. No, I don't know what. not really. Like, there's not enough to have. I don't know why it only has the. Yeah, because we only made the the one choice to go talk to the the, the tanner, or mm -hmm. go talk ask the villagers. That was my choice. Maybe if you talk to the villagers, maybe you get this one because this is supposed to be encounters with Pete. Should we like just look at them anyway? Or no, no you don't I don't want to spoil it. Okay. 
Well, this is just the tutorial. I though. don't care. I don't want to spoil. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know then, because... And what about the purple one? The purple one's like the, the, the creepy stuff. Yeah, the special one. Yeah. But if we're maybe that's explaining how we're, we died and we're actually a zombie. I don't know, guys. I have no idea. I, 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 want, to, I want to figure Sorry, it out. Sorry, I think I'm skipping a sentence here. Wait, there's more? No, there's not. Yeah, because the very last thing tells me to go to back to part 13. <laughs> okay, so it left us on a cliffhanger. Oh, well, wait. Oh, never mind. So when you go, you go back to the farm, and so you have to read number two at the farm. Okay, so we are going to have an ending here. My bad. I'm learning. All you right. got my hopes up for nothing? <laughs> That's what I do. <sighs> All right, so you enter Coronach exhausted and in pain, yet even in this condition, you quickly realize something happened in your absence. Many sad-eyed townsfolk walk the streets to argue in small groups. Startled, uh, you look towards the men here, but it seems fine, surrounded by ribbons flapping in the wind. There's no weirdness in Coronach. So what could draw all these people out of their houses? As you approach the forge, uh, you almost stumble upon the boy who usually delivered Irfir's messages. They're gone, the boy tells you. They left at the break of day. Uh, Irfir wants you to take care of his workshop. You stumble into the building only to find it empty save for a note lying on the workbench, held securely in place by a heavy ingot of star iron. Three times you attempt to read the parchment, your eyes watering from helpless rage. It says, Urfir left Kuranach without you, traveling with Lord uh, Yvain, Fael, uh, Aubert, and Niante. They head for Camelot, where they hope to find help for your town. You were deemed too weak for this journey, not good enough. As silent rage grows within you, gone are the exhaustion and the pain. You leave the forge and look to the east, somewhere there, behind rolling mists, clouds of weirdness and dangerous trails. The Kuranach champions journey on. Uh, you're sure you will find them. Each party member gains one terror. Congratulations, you have finished the tutorial scenario. You will find Urfir's letter in the game box. It will prepare you for the first chapter of the Fall of Avalon campaign. Good luck in the bleak world of, of Tainted Grail. So each party member, which is just you, so we're all the way up to here. So I wonder how, if you just decide not to play Bayor, you just like... Or talk, like just start with other people, and like that was Bayor's story. So it, it almost is like trying to like force you to play Bayor. Mm. It feels like, yeah, since it le literally leads into the story, and you have that. I don't know exactly what that surprising Aaron condition, like, because apparently if you had picked the other one, the questioning the the people, you wouldn't have gotten the second one. You only got that because you chose the other option. Oh. I wonder if that has something to do with the, the main story. I guess so. Maybe maybe I have to deliver the surprising Aaron to somebody. But it still is, kind of leaves us off at um, a cliffhanger. Yeah, it looks like you end up with it either way. But yeah. It's not so, a very good end of a tutorial. Well, it's just the tutorial. But it, it <laughs> still leaves us off with a cliffhanger. Yeah. Well, what are we supposed to do now? I guess I gotta play Bayor so that we know what happens <laughs> to Bayor. No Farmer Dude? Well, I like Farmer Dude better. I wanna play Farmer Dude. Well, maybe Farmer we can, dude. maybe I can play Bayor once and. Farmer Dude? Yeah, and. Okay, guys. Merc mercenary. So, so we have officially decided that we are going to play this game at least twice, so we can finish Bayor's story, and he can get and he can play the farmer dude, which he insists is an executioner. But I'm still calling no. it the farmer dude. Mer it was. It, oh, it, the, the it, mercenary. It literally. I'm so, okay, says I'm it. sorry. The mercenary. That, that was the description of the character. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm calling it a farmer dude. Yeah. You like that. <laughs> 
What's wrong with farmers? There's nothing wrong with farmers. He's got his own scythe. Yeah. All right. You see it like it's a bad thing. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Tabletop Traveler. We will be back because I really want to know the rest of the story. And hopefully we'll figure out how to play a little bit better next time. Yeah, I'm going to be so confused, like, starting, like, what exactly that I do. I'm going to have to be looking at uh, the order of the day all the time. The, this was this is excellent that they included the item glossary and the action overview with the order of the day. That was a great addition to this game. Yeah. All right, we will see you next time. Remember to come travel with us again. If you liked this video, hit the subscribe and like button down below. Leave us a comment about what you think happens to Bayor at the at the end of this. Do you think he's really dead or do you think he's he's uh, like actually living? 